he had been a teacher in in Nigeria, and he had volunteered for the Air Force soon after war broke out. Then he was started training as an airman in UK. Later he went to Canada to complete his training. Basically he was a navigator. He was very good at maths. What did you like about him? <laughs> I can remember I was in the mess having lunch. And one of my instructors was a West Indian. So I was chatting, chatting with him and somebody else. And then came this Nigerian breezing in, newspaper on his arm and all bright and cheerful. He sat down and started talking to Willie. That was the West Indian. So I was listening. And every now and then I have to laugh at something he said. And, he, so, and then he said, it's about time we were introduced. He said, let's go and have coffee. So we went and had coffee and we introduced each other. And um, from that, I can't, I can't, I don't know. There was something about him. He was so, so vibrant and so interesting. And um, I just fell for him. How long was the courtship? Brief. I suppose. Let me see. Um, I think it must have been about June or so that I was posted to that unit. And we were married in November. What did people think of you walking out they didn't like with it. a black Nigerian? They did not like it. One day we were going down to this cafe and a group of um, RAF men uh, I think about four of them waylaid us and they didn't like to see me going out with a black man. In fact, I think they wanted to beat him up. For going out with you? For going out with me, yes. Was that a typical attitude or was that just a few? Well, that was the only incident I experienced like that. There was a day the section officer sent for me and told me that the commanding officer did not like to see me going out with a black man. She said, the CEO doesn't want you to be going out with Sergeant Tukuntoy. I said, well, I choose my friends from where I like. Where I like. And she suggested, well, can't you make it less obvious? I said, well, I don't see how I can make it less obvious. So we, we continued as before, uh, going out together. We would eat together in the mess. We would go to the cinema together. And um, eventually I was posted away. Had they posted you to break you up? Yes, that was the idea. Was that a local arrangement or had that come from no. the Air Ministry? What I, what I thought was, what I thought then, at the time, it was because my commanding officer was from South Africa and I thought that was why he did not want to see a white woman going out with a black man. That was what he thought. Later I learned that actually it was Air Ministry policy pressured by America. We were out walking and we came to a bridge. We were just standing on the bridge, admiring the water flowing under the bridge. And he said, you will like it in Nigeria. And that was it. That's what, that's what he meant. Oh, I, I suppose I said, oh, I, am I coming to Nigeria? He said, of course you are. That was that. Was that his proposal? That was his proposal. <laughs> What did your mother and your father say? Well, I just told them. Um, they were not at all happy about it. They kept trying to talk to me to talk me out of it. I remember my grandfather, I told him, and he just said, well, he said he'd rather rock with Africans than with French. Eventually, my, my husband said, look, this is not going anywhere. They are never going to change their minds. If you want to marry, if you're, if you're really going to marry, let's get married now. So we did. This was, let me see, November 1946. It's really just after the war. We were married in a registry in London, registry office. But it was about the summer before they really came round. We were living somewhere in London. And um, my parents just turned up at the doorstep. And they met my husband, and, and they, that changed everything. When they, once they met him and saw him face to face, they, they, were, it, they found it was quite different from what they had expected. What did David's family and friends think about him having an English wife? All I know is that when I got back to his country, I was made very welcome. 
and um, I know my my mother-in-law. She didn't speak English, so we couldn't hold a real conversation except through an interpreter. But um, I know she liked me, and she was very happy about it. I think she thought I would be good influence on him. <laughs> what made you decide to study law? My husband. Your husband. Absolutely, my husband. Yes. It took him a long time to persuade me. It took him about a year to persuade me to read law because I'd never dreamed of reading law. And he used to come home with a lot of these books and things, and he'd make he'd say, "I'm tired. Read, read to me." And he made me read the law books, and I didn't understand it. <laughs> but, but that was how he got my interest. David had set up a practice. Did you work with your husband? Yes, I did. We um, worked together until he went on the bench as a customary court judge and I went on the bench as a magistrate. At what point did you become a judge? That was 1976. If you were to reflect on your life in England, your service in the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, and then the very fateful posting to 246 Maintenance Unit, what do you think now, looking back? I think I've been very fortunate. I grew up in England, I was shaped by England. I'm glad I was born English. But on the other hand, I went to Nigeria and I was accepted there and made welcome there. And I'm glad that that happened. I've had an interesting life and I think, I think I've been fortunate. And Justice Pokuntoye, thank you very much indeed.